Welcome to 9.1, an intro to conic sections. In this section, we're going to discuss some details about parabolas and some features to go along with them. Let's get started. Before we discuss the parabola in depth, let's go ahead and discuss what a conic section is. So if we look at a cone here and we slice a cone in different ways, we can create different shapes. If we slice a cone horizontally, we see that we get a perfect circle. So that's one of our conic sections. If we slice it at a specific diagonal, our circle gets stretched out and now we have an ellipse, which is more of an oval. If we were to cut it at a different diagonal shape, we would get a parabola. And our final shape is a hyperbola, which we would get by cutting our cone one last time. All right, let's go ahead and look at some more details involving our parabolas. We have certain things for a parabola one to be able to identify. To begin with some familiar terms, we have the vertex, which is your midpoint. And it's the middle between the focus and the directrix, which is something we're going to be discussing today. Our axis, or your axis of symmetry, is a line that passes through the vertex and your focus. Your focus is a point that's on the axis, and it's on the inside of your parabola. And finally, your directrix is a line that runs perpendicular to your axis, and that's going to be behind the parabola, whereas the focus is on the inside. Here we can see a visual representation of your parabola. So we have our parabolic shape here. Your vertex is going to be the center, and it's the same distance away from the focus as it is from the directrix. We have our axis, which is this red line going through the vertex and your focus. We can see the focus here is again on the inside, and the distance again from the vertex to the focus is the same distance as your vertex to the directrix. We can also see here your directrix is perpendicular to your axis of symmetry. We're going to go ahead and identify now how to calculate each one of these parts of our parabola. For our parabola, we actually have two different standard equations of the parabola. We have a vertical parabola and we also have a horizontal parabola. Here we see the equation for what would give us a vertical parabola. So the standard form of our parabola with a vertex of h and k is going to be x minus h squared equal to 4p times y minus k. The fact that I have x as my squared component tells me that I know this is going to be a vertical parabola, which means it's going to be opening up or opening down. Since it's a vertical parabola, our axis of symmetry is going to be x is equal to h. Your directrix is going to be a horizontal line, and that's going to be the equation y equals k minus p. And then for your focus, is again going to be on the inside of our parabola, and it's going to be the point h comma k plus p. So our first task is to identify if we have a horizontal or a vertical parabola. If we identify it's a vertical parabola, we can use this form of the equation to then find our axis of symmetry, our directrix, and our focus. For our example here, we're going to go ahead and find the standard form of a parabola that has a vertex at 2, 1 and a focus at 2, 4. The first thing I can do is identify that since my vertex is 2, 1, I know h and I know k, so I can go ahead and plug those in. And then I want to identify what my p-value is. To help identify what my p-value is, I have the equation of p is equal to 4 minus k. So p kind of represents a distance my focus is away from my vertex. And I have this 4 here because that's the value where my focus is. And then I'm going to plug in the k value from my vertex. So we get 4 minus 3, sorry, 4 minus 1, which is equal to 3. Again, these two values are coming from my focus and my vertex. And I'm evaluating which variable is changing. Since my x values are not changing, since they're both 2, I know my uh, p value is going to be based off the y values. So I just simply do 4 minus 1 to end up getting my actual p value. Now that I know that p is equal to 3, I can go ahead and plug it in. And then when I simplify everything, I have the standard form of my equation. The second form of our parabola is for a horizontal parabola. For this equation, we have y minus k squared, again, equal to 4p times h, sorry, x minus h. For this equation, I know it's going to be horizontal because I have a y squared component, whereas for the last formula, I had an x squared. Based off of this equation and having a horizontal parabola, meaning it opens up left or right, our axis of symmetry is also going to be horizontal, and it'll be the equation y equals k. For your directrix, it's going to be a vertical line, and it's going to be the equation of x equals h minus p. And then for your focus, it's going to be the equation h plus p comma k. All right, for this example, we want to find the standard form of the uh, parabola, given that we have a vertex at 0, 0, and we have a focus at 2, 0. We know that since our vertex is 0, 0, we can identify h and k to be 0 and 0. To find our p value, we're going to use the fact that p represents the distance our focus is away from our vertex. So p is going to end up equaling 2 minus h. 
The 2 comes because that's the actual distance away that it is, and h is my value for my vertex. When I'm simplifying that, I get uh, 2 minus 0, which is equal to 2. So I know that my p-value has to be 2. From there, I'm going to go ahead and plug information in. So if I plug in my h and my k value, I get y minus 0 squared is equal to 4p times x minus 0. That's going to simplify to just be y squared is equal to 4px. Now I can go ahead and plug in my p-value of 2, and I'm getting that y squared is equal to 8x. For a question here, we want to go ahead and find the parts of our problem. So the first thing I'd like to do is get my equation in a standard form. In order to do that, I need to isolate the squared component. So I'm going to have to move this negative 2 over to the other side. I'm going to do that by dividing. So I now have a negative 1 half times y equal to x squared. And the reason why we did this is this value here is going to help us identify p because this expression equals 4 times p. So for my next step, I'm going to try and solve for p. Again, knowing that 4 times p is equal to negative 1 half, I can divide both sides by 4 and finish solving for p, and I get negative 1 eighth. All right, so I have my equation in standard form. I've identified p. I can now find some parts. The first thing I can find is my vertex. Knowing that I have uh, y minus 0 and x minus 0, I have a vertex of 0, 0. Knowing that I have my vertex at 0, 0, and I have an x squared, I know this is going to be a vertical parabola. So that means my axis of symmetry is going to be equaling to my x component for my vertex. So I have x equals 0 as my axis. Now that I have my vertex and I also have identified p, I can find my focus and my directrix. The equation for my focus is going to be h, comma k plus p, again, because I have a vertical parabola. And then for my directrix, it's going to be the equation y is equal to k minus p. So for my focus, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my point 0, 0 at my p-value of negative 1 over 8. And I'm getting the point 0, comma, negative 1 over 8. And this is going to kind of coincide with my equation. I know it's going to be opening down. And my focus is definitely below my vertex, so it's kind of corresponding with that. If I want to find my directrix, I can go ahead and plug in my k value and my p value, and end up getting y equals 1 8 as my directrix. For our example here, we're going to go ahead and find the parts for our parabola. Just like our last example, though, we need to try and put this in standard form. So I have to deal with this expression and try and factor this. And I also need to move my 1 fourth to the other side. That's going to be my first step. I'll move the 1 fourth over by multiplying by 4. And now I have a quadratic. This is not a perfect square, and I would like it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and move the 5 over by subtracting it. And now I can complete the square with my x squared minus 2x. I would take half of my middle term, which would be 1, and then square it. And I get x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then I also have to add a 1 onto the left side, which is how I get my negative 4. On the left side, I can factor this 4 out. And then on my right side, this is now a perfect square, so I can factor that as well. And now I have the standard form for my parabola. I can use this now to identify all of my parts. Now that I have my equation in standard form, I can go ahead and identify my vertex. Looking at, I have y minus 1 and x minus 1, which tells me I'm going to have a vertex of positive 1, 1. My equation has an x squared, so I know this is going to be a vertical parabola. So for my, uh, my axis, it's going to be equaling the x component for my vertex. So I have x equals 1 as my axis. Before I can find my directrix and my focus, I need to identify what my p-value is. And this value over here with my non-square component is always going to equal 4 times p. So I have 4 times p equals 4. Again, this 4 came from right here. Solving for p, I get that's equal to 1. And I'm looking at my equation for my focus and my directrix. I can go ahead and plug in my h, my k, and my p-value to find my focus. So I would get 1, 2. And then for my directrix, if I plug in my k and my p-value, I get y equals 0. If I want to identify which way my parabola is opening, I can look at this value here, and it's going to be a positive 4, which tells me my parabola is going to open up. So I can verify that my focus is actually above my vertex, and that does open up. I can also verify that my directrix is going to be below my vertex, and it's going to be horizontal. For our example here, we have the equation y squared minus 2y plus 8x plus 9 is equal to 0. We want to be able to find the parts, so in order to do that, we need to have our equation in standard form. So to do that, I'm going to group together my y values and move everything else to the other side. And you can see that we have y squared minus 2y is equal to negative 8x plus, sorry, minus 9. I now can go ahead and start to complete the square for my y part. That way I can go ahead and factor it. 
When I complete the square, I'm going to take half of negative 2 and square it, which gets me 1. And I'm going to add 1 to both sides, which is why my negative 9 becomes a negative 8 now, because I've added 1. On my left side, I can go ahead and factor this because it's a perfect square. On my right side, I can factor out a negative 8. And I now have the equation y minus 1 squared is equal to negative 8 times x plus 1. Now that we have our equation in standard form, we can go ahead and find our parts. The first thing we can identify is our vertex. So since our h value is going to be negative 1, our y value is going to be a positive 1, we have the vertex negative 1, 1. Knowing that I have a, uh, sorry, a horizontal parabola, my axis is going to end up being the equation of y equals 1. And then I can go ahead and find my p value using my expression over here. I know that 4p is going to equal that number. So I have 4p equals negative 8. And then solving for p, we get that p is equal to negative 2. I can then use p with my vertex to go ahead and find my focus and my directrix. Again, since we have a horizontal parabola, my focus is going to be the point h plus k comma p. And my directrix is going to be the equation x is equal to h minus p. So plugging in my h, my k, and my p values into those equations, I get my focus is going to be the point negative 3, 1. And my directrix is going to be the point, sorry, be the equation x is equal to 1. All right, I'm going to go ahead and find the parts for this parabola as well. Just like the last example, though, it is not in standard form. So I want to go ahead and do that. My first step to put this in standard form is I would like to have my x values on one side and my y values on the other side. So I went ahead and moved the 6y and the negative 2 to my right side. I can now focus on this left side. I can try and complete the square. Again, to do that, we take half of our x term and square it. And I end up getting x squared plus 4x plus 4. Since I added 4 on the left side, I have to add 4 on the right side. And that's how I got the 6 over here. I'm going to go ahead and factor this now since it's a perfect square. And I can factor out a common factor of negative 6 on my right side. And I get x plus 2 squared is equal to negative 6 times y minus 1. All right, now that I have my equation in standard form, I can identify my vertex. Knowing that I have x plus 2 and y minus 1, I'll have a vertex of negative 2 comma 1. I can also identify my axis. Again, I have an x squared, so I know it's going to be a vertical parabola, which means my axis is going to be x equals negative 2. Before I can find my directrix and my focus, I need to find p. For, uh, to find p, we're going to set 4p equal to our expression over here. So I have 4p is equal to negative 6, and then when you just solve for p, you get that it is equal to negative 3 over 2. So I can now go ahead and plug that value into my equation for my focus and for my directrix. When I plug in my h, my k, and my p for my focus, I get negative 2 comma negative 1 half. And then when I plug in my k and my p for my directrix, I get y is equal to 5 over 2. Again, we want to verify that things are correct. So I can see that I have a negative value over here, which tells me my parabola is going to open down. And I can see that my focus is definitely going to be below my vertex. So it's going to be telling me it is opening towards that focus and opening down. All right, guys, that does it for our uh, notes here. Go ahead and get started on the homework. Good luck.